So it's been a little bit of a boring day for me. So I was kind of messing around just modeling a men's ring for fun. And I kind of liked the results. I decided why not turn it into a little tutorial for you guys. Um, maybe it's a little bit boring, a little bit basic, but I think it's fun. And um, we're going to do it all the way to we get to this final render result here. Um, yeah, so some pretty basic modeling technique here. I think this is a fun beginner's tutorial because there's nothing too complicated. But at the end of the day, you learn some cool modeling techniques and you can make something cool like this. Um, yeah, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you. It's actually a lot simpler than you think to kind of get this result. So we're going to go ahead and make these rings, add some materials, some basic lighting. And uh, yeah, you can have a final render. So let's jump in and make a men's ring. So go ahead and select the default objects in the scene and you can press delete on your keyboard. We're then gonna go shift A and under our mesh options, we're gonna go down and add in a circle. And we're gonna come here to our add circle settings. And we're gonna take this from 32 and we're gonna take it up to 60 by typing in 60 and then go ahead and press enter and then bring this down. So now we have kind of like what we need to get started. So we're gonna come up here and go down into edit mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to our front orthographic view with everything active. And we're gonna go E to extrude and hold in control and snap it up and let's go four spaces like this. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly the same way I did it just now, but you can see here on the grid, it's one, two, three, four spaces. Even just eyeing it, you could probably get it roughly looking like this. We're then gonna go G, Z and holding in control, we're gonna move the whole thing down while we're holding, we're still holding in control. So G, Z and holding in control. We're gonna just snap it down two grid spaces and then left click. So now we have it perfectly in the middle. And once again, if you were just eyeing it, it's fine. You don't have to worry too much about being 100% precise here. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just go to our edge select option here. And we're gonna just go double tap A to deselect everything. And we're gonna go shift alt, holding those two keys and just left click at the top edge and the bottom edge. That's gonna loop select these two edges running around. And then we're just gonna go E to extrude and then right click to let go and then S, Z and scale it up on the Z. And let's go about this much. Perfect. Now we're gonna to go to our face select option and I'm gonna enable X-ray and I'm just gonna select all these top faces, holding in shift, I'm gonna select all these bottom faces. I'm gonna to toggle off the X-ray and let's now press F3 on our keyboard. I'm gonna type in extrude and we're gonna look for extrude individual faces. And then we're just gonna move and let's extrude it out mm, about this much should be fine. I'm gonna turn on the X-ray again and I'm gonna select all of these middle faces and toggle off the X-ray. And if them will active, let's go F3 again and look for extrude individual faces. It should be there because we've already used it. And let's just move our mouse and bring it out about this much, just a little bit more than the previous ones. Okay, now we created that. Um, let's toggle on the X-ray again. While we're still in the front orthographic, let's just select all of these top vertices like so. And here's where it gets interesting because you can uh, make this however you want, but I'm gonna go R, Z, and just rotate it on the Z and I'm gonna rotate it till I have what looks to me like about a 30 degree angle on this. And then I'm gonna just left click. You can go with whatever amount you want. Okay, just like that. And then you're gonna to go to your modifiers, add modifier, search and type in sub. And then you get a subdivision surface modifier. And now we have this. So you can come in here in the middle, control R, roll your middle mouse button to add in two segments, double click. And then with them both active, go S, Z and scale them up just to tighten that up. And then control R in the middle again, double click. And then you can just scale up one more loop. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bump the render up to three and the viewport levels I'm gonna to take to two. And then I'm gonna tab back out into object mode, right click and go shade smooth. So here we have the ring, but we need to obviously give it some thickness. So in edit mode again, let's just go to our edge select option Shift, Alt, left click on this loop over here to select it, the inner edge, and let's go to the bottom, Shift, Alt, left click to select this one as well. And they're both active. And now we're just gonna go E to extrude. And we're gonna go S, Shift, Z. So S, Shift, Z with those two extruded edges. And this is how you can select how um, thick you want the ring to be. So I'm gonna go something about this much and I'm gonna just left click. 
And then you can go Control E with both of these edges selected. And because they have the same amount of edges, you can go Control E and just go Bridge Edge Loops, and it should automatically bridge them like so. And you can come here to your ed, um, Bridge Edge Loops, and you can go here and the number of cuts. And let's increase that to two, bring this down. And now let's just go Shift Alt and left click on this edge and this edge. And then go S, Z and scale them along the Z just to tighten up our subdivision surface here. And we're gonna come in the middle, Control R, add in another segment by double clicking and then S to slightly scale. And there we have it. So let's tab back out. Now we have our ring. Um, make sure to save. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this on my desktop. So like so. And we can now go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. And let's go G, Z and move it up so it's sitting on the floor, like so. And you can go Shift A, add in a plane. And let's just scale this plane up nice and big. And then we're gonna come in here. If you didn't already delete your camera, you can just come find a position. Shift A, add in a camera. Press zero on your number pad to go to camera view and G, middle mouse button, and you can just zoom out. Okay, I'm sure you guys probably know how to place a camera, but we're just gonna put it coming from the top like so. And feel free to rotate your camera or your ring to get a position that you like, but I'm gonna go something like this. And then I'm gonna just click. You guys can position the camera however you want. And what I might just do is in edit mode, I might just grab my ring and just go S, Y and just scale it a little bit on the Y. That's once again, personal preference, but I think a men's, man's ring needs to be a little bit more chunky. Um, just has a little bit more, I guess, a masculine feel to it. So that's what we're kind of going for. And another thing with the camera, um, going to your camera settings, let's just make the focal length 120. And I think that's gonna give us a much more shallow kind of view here and a much softer effect with the depth of field later on. But let's just place it somewhere here. Excellent. And then let's go Shift A, let's just add in an area light. And honestly, I would just have a few of them coming from the side. So one over here, maybe give it a size of three meters, a strength of 450. At this scale should be okay. And then just go Shift D to duplicate and just, you know, have a few going around like that. Honestly, um, at this point, you can add as many lights as you want, experiment with positioning. But let's go over to our render settings. Let's change the render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU, I always recommend you enable it and use it. And then under your render samples, I think we can get away with 50. I'm just doing a tutorial. So if you wanna have a higher quality render, by all means, you can bump up the samples. Um, but I am also relying on denoising here. Okay, so now let's just go Z and then go rendered. So now we ha have some nice lighting here. So let's grab our ring. Let's go over to our material settings. Let's go new. I'm just gonna click here and name it ring. And we're gonna come to the base color and let's make it kind of like a bronzy kind of yellow. And the magic happens when we take the metallic up to one. And we bring the roughness down to, I don't know, I'd say not too, not all the way down to zero, but about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 should be fine. And then we probably just need to have one of these lights kind of coming from the top, just so we get a bit of um, these nice reflections. And by the way, we'll go to your world and make it completely black. So we have these nice kind of contrasting shadows and occluded areas here. And honestly, just the way you maneuver your lights around um, can have a huge effect on how this all kind of looks. So experiment a bit with light, light position, but this is kind of what I'm going with. So now let's grab our floor and let's go to materials and go new. And with this one, honestly, you can give it whatever you want, but I'm gonna go with kind of like a darker kind of bluish green. There we go. And with the ring, I might just adjust the yellow just a little bit till it feels a bit more goldish, something like that. And then we're gonna go shift A. We're just gonna add in an empty and let's go for a cube. And we wanna kind of place this empty. We wanna look where our camera is. We wanna place the empty kind of at the top of the ring, like so, but between where the camera is, like that. And then what we can do in our camera view is we can actually take that empty, select our camera and go to our camera settings and go to depth of field. Click on an eyedropper and then select that empty. 
and bring the focal, um, the f-stop down to 0.4. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should have this nice kind of soft focus. Um, that should look pretty good. There we go. And now I'm just going to take this ring and I'm just going to just for the, you know, interest sake, so it looks a bit more interesting. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to duplicate one of these rings by going shift D and I place it over here. I'm going to go R to rotate it and just kind of put it behind here and then shift D. I'm going to just place another one kind of over here and let's see what it looks like in the camera view. Okay. Something like that. Mess around with it all you like, honestly. Um, it's all sorts of different ways you can make this look cool. So, so yeah, I'm gonna actually take that camera, go to f-stop, take it maybe even lower. So we really get that kind of nice soft focus here. Okay, and I think one more way we can make this look maybe a little bit better is to just go to our shading workspace, grab one of our rings, and then just go shift a search and get a noise texture. And then we're gonna take this noise texture, plug it into normal here, and then go, and then go shift a search and get a bump. Place it over here, make sure it's going to the height. Take the strength down to 0 0.05. And now if we go into our camera view and we go Z and go rendered, we've got some, a little bit of distortion going on. I might take this roughness up just a little bit more even, and maybe make the yellow just a little bit darker here. I think that's looking really cool. So let's go ahead and save and then go render and render image to do a bit of a test render. And there we have it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this Blender tutorial. Um, if it's been fun, you know, give it a like, let me know in the comments and you can check out some of my links in the description to Patreon, um, to um, Instagram, to the Discord group. We've got hundreds of um, people on the Pixar 3D Discord group. All of that's in the description if you want to be more involved and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.